is going to be going over this Timberline chainsaw sharpener. Uh, it's how I sharpen my saw because I suck at it any other way, point blank. Uh, I've tried to use uh, just a straight, a uh, round file, but a straight one. I've tried to use some guides, and I've just bought a couple different things um, trying to help myself sharpen them because doing it by hand with no guide is not for this guy. I just can't get the hang of it, and I don't cut wood enough where I need to keep sharpening my saw enough where I get proficient at it. So if you're like me and you just can't get it, uh, this little jig here, Timberline makes it, it's pretty handy. One thing I do have to say is I don't really care for the bag. It's not really big enough. You can see, I'll show you why later. It would be big enough if I took it apart. But anyways, I'm going to take the saw, the sharpener, go over to the tailgate of the truck and sharpen it up. Here we are on the tailgate. We're all set up. When you're doing this, I suggest you have some gloves. Um, I do, you know, it's winter time. In order to work this thing, I take these big cumbersome gloves off. But um, I suggest you get some because this has still got some sharp teeth on it. This is the Timberline Chainsaw Sharpener Kit. It comes in a nice little bag, which is pretty good. I wish the bag was just a hair bigger. The reason is when you open it up here and you first get it the first time, this set screw is out. And this uh, bit, filing bit, is inside this pocket. Both of these fit right inside this pocket here. And they can be secured with the zipper. But you're not going to want to be messing around with an Allen wrench, trying to mess with that set screw when you're trying to uh, get some wood cut. And you got to sharpen your saw real quick. You don't want to put together this tool first. So it doesn't really fit in there and get zipped up with it all together. So I end up putting it in here, which works pretty well but I just worry about losing it and it secures pretty good but I think if the bag was just a little bit bigger I would like it a little better uh, possibly something different than the velcro on the front that's my only complaint about the whole thing so this obviously is what you're using to sharpen your chain with and this is the jig it does come with a couple other aluminum uh, this part right here that'll slide right in there it has set screws on the bottom. You pull this out. You can see the hole on the cent on that one is right in the center. And the hole on this one is off to the side. So it's per putting a different angle on your chain than uh, the standard angle. So I probably will never use those. So there's the case. This is the jig. What we're going to do is set it up real quick and uh, show you how it works. So on mine, I've already managed to break one of these handles. You can see it's, it's broken right here. And uh, I've had it for about four years, so it's definitely gotten some use. It's cold weather, brittle, and that's what happens sometimes. So what you're gonna do is set it on there. What I like to do is back this off. And what this knob right here does this knob right here moves this block. It just moves it back. And you can see this down here. It's got a little stopper right here. And that's just to set up against the back of the tooth to uh, push it forward, hold it a little bit snug. This knob right here tightens up this little bar which holds your chain in place from moving left or right back and forth like this while you're sharpening it. So. What I like to do is one set of teeth at a time because it doesn't always line up perfect for both sets. So you insert the file into here, into the tooth that you're going to be working on. And at that point you can see the whole thing kind of hovers and bounces back and forth. You want to get it in the middle, happy medium, and then go ahead and snug down these two knobs right there. And that's snug. Next step is I'm going to bring this back forward until it's touching the back of the tooth. 
which is taking up slack right about there. So right now I can spin this real tight, real, real easy. It's not hitting any of that tooth. It's in and out, in and out. So what it needs to be is pull this back just a little bit so the tip is in there. Move your chain forward. Froze up because it was hot when I shut it off. It's about 20 degrees out here, so I should probably go inside, but I don't know if the light would be as good. Okay, so now I moved it forward just a hair. I tightened this back up so it's against the back of the tooth. And as I try and put this in, it won't go in without turning it clockwise, just like that. So as you can see, get it nice and stable here. As you can see, as you turn it, it's taking some off that tooth. And I'm pushing in as I go. And there you have it. Once this handle is in all the way, right here where it spins, you're as far as it will go. You can spin it a few times and then back it out as you're spinning. And you can see the nice new edge on that tooth. So you can definitely tell where you started. There's a tooth right here that hasn't been touched. And you can tell that there's, you know, no, uh, Right here, you can see there's nothing on there, no filings or anything. So, that's what it looks like after you get done with one. You pull this file out, and you can go to this one and then put this handle in the back here, which it does line up fairly good every now and then. But what I've had problems with sometimes is it doesn't line up that, that well. And then you pull it back out of there. So this time I can actually do every tooth as I go. There's been times before when it just didn't line up that, that, that well. So sometimes I just do one set and then adjust my jig a little bit and do the other set. But you can see it works fairly good. That's uh, what's this, the fourth tooth. And I'm talking and showing and trying to work around the camera if I was working without the camera I sharpen it up in no time so that's it that's the gist of it that's nice and sharp right there there you have it Timberline chainsaw sharpener about 130 I think I've seen around 120 to 150 somewhere in there so you know think about it how many times you try and file your chain and your blade your bar starts walking on you or something because you didn't get them all even all the way around and um, think if the money's worth it you'll always have it I've had this four years I've had the same uh, bit for it and it's still going it's still sharpening so four years that's quite a bit of wood for me heating the house with with wood so all right well thanks for watching hope you enjoy the video and uh we'll try to get another video out to you soon thanks